Англійська мова. І козачок Тетяна Юрівна розкаже нам, яку тему підготувала. Пані Тетяна, вам слово. Доброго ранку. Hello to everybody. My name is Tetiana and I'm again here like a host of our today's video lesson. What is the topic of our today's lesson? What are we going to talk about? We are planning to chat about outdoor activities as for speaking skills. And our next topic will be the comparison of the present perfect simple and past simple. Uh, it's a burning problem for the most part of the students, the understanding of the present perfect simple and its usage. Uh, we'll try to learn this new grammar rule and later to practice it in some exercises. Let's start from our outdoor activities. What does it mean and what are the aims of our today's video lesson? First of all, it's revising and practicing vocabulary. If you stay at home and uh, uh, your parents are also at home, you can take them like your partners and you can do it together with your moms or your dads or with your younger or elder sisters or brothers. Then we'll try to make up some short conversations and to memorize and train a new grammar rule. Okay, so let's start. English conversation practice. Uh, you can prepare your notebooks or vocabularies as you like and you can practice all together. The structures, I like it. Uh, the synonym, I'm fond of it. I don't like it or I dislike it. It's just the same. Let's preview. What are your favorite outdoor activities? Probably swimming, surfing and flying. You can pronounce together with me these words. Uh, later we'll take playing volleyball, barbecuing and jogging. Pronounce all together. So then playing the ball, riding on the swing and playing golf. Then playing baseball, skiing and scuba diving. Scuba diving, you can pronounce these words uh, for several times as it is rather difficult in pronunciation. Then some outdoor activities uh, are concerning uh, household duties, drying clothes and washing a car, and uh, one of your favorites, uh, skateboarding. Skateboarding. Okay, so just a minute. Sorry, it's a technical. Okay, so now it's your turn to express the preferences by saying, for example, surfing, I like it or I dislike it, flying, jogging, I'm fond of it or I don't like it. Uh, next, you can also uh, express your preferences as for swimming, playing volleyball and barbecuing, saying, I like it or I dislike it. For example, swimming, I'm fond of swimming. Volleyball, I'm fond of volleyball. Uh, barbecuing, I like it. Let's go further. So again, playing the ball, riding on the swing and playing golf. You can uh, choose one of your favorite structures. Then, just the same as for playing baseball, scuba diving and skiing. For example, as for me, I dislike scuba diving. And it all depends uh, on your own preferences. Drying clothes, as it is uh, your household duty, probably you can say, I dislike it or I don't like it. Washing a car, it's one of the preferences of your parents. You can also say, I don't like it. And skateboarding, you can say, I'm fond of skateboarding. Uh, today also we are planning to make up some short dialogues and practice uh, them. And we use a new structure for you. Let's go, let's go. And we are going to introduce some new words such as let's go to the library and you can pronounce 
it twice library library and you can say that's a good idea let's go to the beach 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 that's a good idea next let's go to the gym 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 that's a good idea or you can say that's a great idea let's go roller skating roller skating roller skating that's a good idea let's go shopping 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 that's a good idea but i just want to remind you that during this isolated period of quarantine uh, you can't do all of these outdoor activities probably just go shopping and now we are planning to have a look at our new grammar material so we are planning to introduce present perfect simple and to compare it with past simple present perfect simple it has three functions one of them is a to indicate past events, another one recent past events and unfinished states. Let's go further. Uh, for better understanding of this material, we can use a timeline. Past events timeline. So, what does it mean? We can use this timeline in the past, then in present and in future. So, it's okay, so let's introduce the irregular verbs and regular verbs. For example, past perfect tense. What is the time words? The time words for present and past simple are sorry, ever, never, just, already, and yet. The word yet we use in the end of our sentence. Okay, so let's go further what are the helping verbs the helping verbs are have and has these are helping verbs for i we you they and has for the prepositions she he it then what is past participle past participle if it is the regular verb it is the verb with the ending ed and if it is the irregular verb it is the third column of the irregular verbs so in the end of our today's lesson we'll uh, practice it in some training exercises so let's go further the present perfect simple indicates that something happened in the past between the day you were born until now. I have been to Australia. It means that you went there some time ago. And be careful of the difference between the verbs been and gone. Been means that you are back yet and gone means that you went at any period of time but you didn't return so when someone asks you have you ever been to australia it means that you have been there at any time from the day you were born until now we often use the uh, helping word never to emphasize negatives and ever to emphasize our questions about past events let's go further what is the second function the second function is talking about recent past events as an example mom have you finished cooking dinner yes i have made your favorite 
cookies. We can also use just already yet or ever, never, just already yet. I uh, prefer to learn these helping words together with my students in class. So, what is the third function of the present perfect simple tense? When we are talking about unfinished states, just remember we use for to indicate a certain period of time, for an hour, for two days, and since for a starting point of time, since last time or since the 1980s. Let's go further. As for the timeline, we can uh, give an example such as uh, one boy met, for example, a girl at a certain point of time. Then uh, they still know each other in the present and they have known each other for two weeks. Here we use a uh, present perfect simple. So let's go further. As for the past simple, it has only one function, that is to talk about finished events when the time is known. When your mom asks, how was your date, honey, her son could reply, we broke up. So what are the forms of the present perfect simple statements? We use subject, then we use have, has or the negative form, plus past participle, here, past participle, and uh, whatever you want to say, plus helping words, for, since, before, recently, yet. I have been to Australia, I have never been to America, he has been to Kiev, I have not made dinner yet. We use yet always in the end of the sentences. Let's go further. The forms of the present perfect simple for open questions. Open questions, they always start from WH or how plus have has plus negatives, plus the subject, plus past participle, then what you want to say, plus yet or time word, which is optional. For example, how long have you known each other for? How long? It's a WH or open question. Then uh, forms for yes, no questions. Yes, no questions. On the first place, have, has or negatives, plus subject, plus ever, plus past participle, plus what you want to say, then yet or other time word. For example, have you been to Australia or have you finished cooking dinner yet? Okay, so let's sum up the material and do some grammar exercises. The present perfect simple has three functions. It indicates past events, then recent past events, and then unfinished states. As uh, for the past simple, it has only one function to indicate the action, the time of which is uh, known. So, fill the gaps with have or has. Uh, don't forget this rule. Have we use for preposition, uh, for uh, pronouns I, we use they, and has for the pronouns he, she, it. Okay? Let's start. Fill the gaps together with me. She opened the window. How do you think? If it is she, we use has. Next, they called us. They, for they, it will be have. Then, you carried a box. For you, it will be uh, the helping verb have. It rained a lot. For it, it will be again has. We washed the car. For we, we use the helping verb have. Uh, he closed the window. Again, he, uh, we should use has. Jenny locked the door. Jenny, it's a girl. Jenny, she, that's why we use the helping verb has. And uh, let's do our next uh, exercise, complete the sentences. You then read many books. You, for you, we use have, and uh, when we open the brackets, we use the third column. It means read, 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 the third column. Then, 
uh, I lose money. I, it means uh, that we use have, and the third form, lose, lost, lost. Ben has plus listen with the ending ed. They, we use have, and the third form, drunk two glasses. You, it means have plus get, got, got, the third column. Mary has plus get, got, got, and Tom, it's a boy, he, it means we use has, and the third form, go, went, gone. You can use your notebooks, you can copy down this exercise, and you can do it by yourselves at home uh, to remember and to practice again the present perfect simple tense. Uh, thanks for the attention. I wish you just uh, a good time and uh, don't panic and follow the rules of the hygiene. Bye.